I like capacitors. Do you know that the governing equation for resistors is V is IR? A little bit of Ohm's law, right? But you also know that the governing equation for capacitors is Q is CV. And this is a very interesting relationship between these two. And we'll see that, well, V is Q over C in a very similar way, like except that R is linear here with V, but C is inversely proportional to V. So we're gonna get some different results here with capacitors as we try combining them. I want capacitors in parallel and in series. And we'll start with the simpler one. So do you remember which was simpler with resistors? Was it so, uh, peri <laughs> parallel or series? <clears throat> and of course it was series. It turns out that in capacitors, you're talking about a simpler situation if you put capacitors in parallel. So there's a capacitor, this is just a battery. And here's another capacitor that I'll put here. And then I'll give you one more capacitor over here. And let's say, in principle, that these are different capacitors, C1, C2, and C3. And I ask you, what is the same? And this should be obvious because you know a lot about metal. What is the same for each capacitor in parallel? So this is teaching you physics in a way that you'll be able to figure out why it is what it is. So if you go to a desert island and you're the only person there and you have to rebuild civilization, at least you'll be able to start with physics of the 19th century, which would be pretty awesome. You could get a lot of civilization going there. Again, I'm not gonna tell you this until you tell me. What is the same for each of these capacitors? Is it the capacitance? No, that's stupid, right? Is it the charge? I don't think there's any reason that these have to be holding the same charge. Is it the potential? Is the potential difference across this similar to the potential difference across that? Similar to the potential difference across that? Of course! They're connected by a wire. So this is an equipotential down here. That's an equipotential up there. So the capacitance is different and the charge is different, but the voltage is the same for each, which gives us some really cool ability. First of all, I'm gonna draw our equivalent circuit, and that is just a single capacitor here that has an equivalence capacitance. See equivalent right there, plus and minus. And we'll put a little bit of color on this slide before we're all finished. <clears throat> Let's say that the voltage of the battery, that's over here, VBAT, is the voltage across capacitor one is the voltage across capacitor two, is the voltage across capacitor three. But charge, we're gonna investigate uh, Q and C and V, just like with a resistor, we investigated V and I and Ara. So the charge total, that would be all of these charges on the positive plate, that's gonna be Q total, that's just going to be the charge on the positive plate of one, plus the charge on the positive plate of two, plus the charge on the positive plate of three. And you know that each of these Qs is CV, so I've got C1 times V battery, plus C2 times V battery, plus C3 times V battery. All right, and I can beautifully factor out the V battery, so I get C1 plus C2 plus C3 times V battery. Mm -hmm. And this says Q total is something times V battery, and I know that Q is CV, so if I'm talking about total charge and total voltage, this thing that's right here has to be total capacitance, or effective capacitance, or equivalent capacitance. So I'm gonna say C equivalent times V battery, which gives me an equation for equivalent capacitance for capacitors that are in, uh, what are we talking about? Parallel, and that says the equivalent capacitance for parallel is, it's just going to be the sum of the individual capacitances. We'll go from one to the total number of capacitors that are in parallel, and we will add up each of the capacitances. Next, we go to series. And in series, we have a battery, and a capacitor, and a capacitor, and a capacitor. And now we have to make some sense out of this thing. Plus 
and minus. And these capacitors can, in principle, be different capacitances, C1, C2, C3. What is the same? For each? What is the same for each of these capacitors? Well, is it voltage? No, I'm not sure it is. Is it capacitance? No, there's no reason that we have to use exactly the same capacitor, but it must be, it must be the charge. And I'm gonna try to argue why the charge on this capacitor, there's a, uh, a plus Q here and a minus Q there, has to be the same as the charge on this capacitor, plus Q and minus Q, which again has to be the same charge on this capacitor, plus Q and minus Q there and there. Consider, if you will, this section of metal. Now it's kind of weird because I'm thinking about half of one capacitor and half of the other capacitor and the wire that's connecting them. But if you look at this chunk of metal in this circuit, it's really an isolated chunk of metal. And so what it is, is it's a chunk of metal in between two plates. And as a result of being in an electric field, it's in those two plates, it, uh, <clears throat> well, this chunk of metal is polarized. So there, the chunk of metal was neutral, and in fact, there are no wires connecting to it, so it has to simply have a net charge of zero. So if there's a positive charge here, then there must be the same negative charge over there. And the same situation is happening in what I'll do as the pink circle. In this circle right here, this also has just no net charge, yet it's got polarization, it's got negative charge there and positive charge there. So if I've got some charge here, that has to be the opposite of the charge here, and this charge here has to be the opposite of that charge there, which has to be the opposite of that charge there, and the opposite of that charge, and that charge, and that charge, and that charge. So of course all the charges are the same, but the voltages are different and the capacitances are different. So let us go then to a little bit of math. I'm going to argue first that the voltage total, I'm gonna to do a little bit of Kirchhoff's loop rule, I'm gonna say that the total voltage is the voltage of the battery. And that's the voltage of all these capacitors. And that's going to be, well, it'll be V1 plus V2 plus V3. The voltage across this capacitor plus the voltage across that capacitor plus the voltage across that capacitor. That is the voltage from here to here, and it's the voltage of the battery, all right? And then I wanna point out that those voltages, because Q is CV, I know that V is Q over C. So this voltage here, voltage one, is charge one divided by capacitance one plus charge two divided by capacitance two plus charge three divided by capacitance three but we said the charges are the same so they can factor out I've got Q times one over C one plus one over C two plus one over C three <gasps> here's what I've got this is the charge on each capacitor and it says here V total equals the charge on the capacitor times the equivalent Capac no, divided by the equivalent capacitance because Q is CV. So I've got myself a funky looking equation. In fact, you've seen one of identical form. One over the equivalent capacitance is, well, what am I gonna get? I gotta write this in a funny way. I'm gonna write it as a summation from the first capacitor to the last one that you've got in series. We have to add those capacitances up like that. So I'm gonna be adding the inverse of the capacitance. This means that any additional capacitors in series decrease the capacitance of the equivalent capacitor. Let me draw an equivalent capacitor circuit so that you remember this is the circuit we can simplify it to. And um, however, in parallel, any additional capacitors, check this out, any additional capacitors over here would increase the capacitance. If we add more and more and more, we add more, in oh, and that makes sense because I'm essentially creating one enormous capacitor. Who cares if these guys aren't connected? It's kind of as if they are connected. So I'm adding more and more area as I put more and more capacitors here in parallel. And so of course that increases the capacitance because capacitance is epsilon naught times area over the separation of the plates in a simple situation. And in this one, as I add more and more 
more and more of them in series, of course I'm decreasing the capacitance, because just by the same token, capacitance is epsilon naught over times area over distance. And what, essentially what I'm doing is I'm separating the plates by more and more and more distance. As I sneak more and more capacitors in here, this plate is really the only plate that's meaning any business, and that plate right there. So I'm separating them by a greater and greater distance, like that distance, plus that distance, plus that distance. But the great advantage of this is that each capacitor gets to experience a lower voltage. And you know that if a capacitor sees too much voltage, that sucker will zap, it will short out, and and probably melt the goo that's inside it, the dielectric, and will cause a path where the current can always flow, and now you don't have a capacitor, you have a wire. That sucks. It might also be a good idea to add more and more capacitors this direction, but as you increase this capacitance, you don't increase the greatest potential difference that you can withstand. In fact, this, this enormous capacitor, effective capacitor they're making by putting more and more and more of them in parallel, will still be limited by the lowest absolute voltage of the most pathetic capacitor in here. As soon as that capacitor shorts, your whole game is shot. Unless you pull it out. But really, if any one of these fails, then the whole game is over. Shoot! So they've both got advantages, and in a real-world situation where you're trying to build a supercapacitor that you can shock people or destroy cans or stuff, we're working on this in physics club, you want to probably connect some of them in parallel, and then take those parallel groups and connect them in series, and then take some of those series parallel groups and connect them in parallel to get yourself an awesome, beautiful combination of capacitors that, well, solving it's going to give everybody a headache, but the beautiful thing is it's really simple in each little part. You've got this parallel configuration for equivalent capacitance, and you've got this series configuration for equivalent capacitances. And notice that the series for capacitors looks like the parallel for resistors, and the parallel for capacitors looks like the series for resistors, because the relationship on voltage is inversely proportional, depending on whether you're talking about capacitors or resistors. Goodbye.